I'm going to hand over now to Stuart McLaren at YPP, um, who's also talking about um, diversification. Hello there, Stuart. Hi, uh, you okay? Fine, thank you. We're over to you. I'm going to talk about what we've been doing, and it's really interesting because actually quite a few companies that we've just been here, including Richard, talking about diversification and how COVID products uh, shot to the top of the list. It was very similar to ourselves, actually. Um, COVID range end of March being mainly sports industry that we supply um, instantly uh, disappeared and then uh, COVID range came and then we actually had our busiest quarter. Um, so your print partner we started as a specialist large format uh, printer um, basically supplying textile printing we, we supplied mainly to other print firms uh, across the UK uh, some into Europe and for a number of years did really well at that. Um, in 2014, we launched a brand called Santa Sachs, which um, actually was probably where the diversification came at the start because your print partner was great through the summer and that when we had large sporting events and then went very quiet in the winter months as a company. Um, Santa Sachs took off, um, there was 40,000 orders uh, a year over the Christmas period and is the mass market uh, side of the business. In 2019, that's when our main diversification came because as we've heard, most people on the conference has been talking about how large format they're investing into. We were one of the first textile large formats. There's a lot more out there now. We run 13 3.2 meter wide textile printers uh, three 1.8s, uh, two ovens, two cutters, and we've got about 47 staff on site at the moment. So we, we've grown, and the reason that we kept growing was diversifying. As more people came into the market, we wanted to do different things. So Custom Gifts was formed. Uh, Custom Gifts, looking at our main manufacturing capacity that we have in the UK, uh, and then from that being able to use the equipment to grow into other markets. So we started uh, looking at personalization and there's a lot of companies out there that do personalization, uh, but they do it where they add your name to a product. So it would just be like a, a mug and you can add Stuart to it or add a photograph to a cushion. And that wasn't the sort of market that we wanted. We wanted to add major brands to that. So in, 2017 was the idea 2018 was contemplating the idea and at the end of 2018 we agreed that we would launch custom gifts uh, the website which uh, was basically only going to be focusing on a b2c market uh, on a consumer level instead of being a normal b2b business that we have been from the start uh, Custom Gifts was formed and the way we did it was we signed licenses with major brands. Our first major license that we signed was with Warner Brothers. Um, so we have the license to produce gifts for around about 57 of their major assets, including Harry Potter, Scooby-Doo, Fantastic Beast, so all the major brands. And we looked at that and went, actually, that's a really good model to take forward. So since then, we've actually signed up another 52 football clubs, um, which was to produce personalized gifts, everything from uh, cushions, towels, fleece blankets, but adding the official brand on it and manufacturing it in the UK. So all of them leave with an official label of the brand in the brand packaging. Uh, and we also then had to develop uh, API feeds into the retailers. So if you go on to Arsenal's website, you're able to buy a personalized towel that automatically feeds into our system. Uh, the only way that we could ever scale to the volume of jobs that we now process is kind of, as Richard said as well, is making sure you've got systems in place that can deal with them and keep brand consistency and speed through the factory because customers aren't now wanting necessarily just price. They, they literally go, it's my partner's birthday tomorrow. I want it tomorrow. Uh, and the B2C market is just as demanding as what the B2B market is. is. Um, just in the last week, we've actually just launched uh, Sesame Street, uh, which has been an amazing one for us, um, taking a whole concept of designs uh, 15 days ago to launching it and actually taking over the whole website. So our whole website at the minute 
has had a Sesame Street takeover. So Elmo, Big Bird and all that's taken over our website and probably our customer service team too, to be fair. Um, and the, it's all about using existing equipment to go forward. Now, look, if I had a crystal ball, I would have said the exact same as I'm sure all of us would say in March, thinking of what was going to happen was probably quite scary. Um, we did okay out of it. COVID range that we uh, produced, we had to market within 48 hours uh, from hygiene stands that were manufactured in the UK through to hand sanitizer to face masks to supplying tens of thousands of face visors to the NHS. It was all turned around very quickly because we knew that there was going to be a demand seeing what the rest of Europe was doing. Since then, COVID-19 played a massive part. We actually had another range of orders cancel on us just recently uh, with sports events being told there and exhibitions that they could go back to work on the 1st of October and then obviously that's changed again um, which, which is where most of the large format side of our business was um, and we had big contracts that sports events that were going ahead and then just pulled so actually having the B2C market at the minute has stayed busy all the way through COVID and if anything got busier during those months because you couldn't go out, you couldn't go to the shop and buy a gift or a present. You went straight online. And we saw a massive spike in our production for that. Um, processing around about at the minute, about 1,500 orders a day on that side of the business. Uh, and probably going into Q4, we, we would imagine that we're going to be up to about 3,500 orders a day. Our first Christmas with full capacity, as long as government guidance don't change and try locking us out of uh, production. Um, so that's kind of where we've diversified in print, still using our existing equipment, but just kind of using it to a new market in effect. Thank you very, very much for that. I mean, I just need to ask you, Stuart, um, in general, I mean, how important do you think it is for a large format PSP these days to have a, well a web to be uh, to web to print offering um, and b um, a business to consumer focus. I think that's a tough one because B two C market is very hard. Different trading laws, yeah, payments and that. The only one real good thing with B two C is obviously you paid online at the time of ordering and you're not given 45, 60, 90 days credit. Um, so it does make a very big difference that side. I think depending on your product line, depends if you need to be a, a all web or singing, dancing automation business, or you're more separated into the traditional account managers and that. We couldn't do custom gifts without the automation because the sheer volume of orders under brand guidance, like you can't go on to um, an Arsenal town and say the manager's an idiot because one day the manager is an idiot in the fan's eyes, the next day is the best thing since sliced bread. But we have all profanity checks and everything built into that. Now with the volume of orders, if I had designers here sat there creating a towel every time, it wouldn't be cost effective. So to run the production through our systems, automated uh, creating the artwork, tracking through the whole factory, targeting each department, checking on SLAs, checking on quality in a team and that, that makes a massive difference. And all of that's available to all of our management team on iPads and giant screens through the whole building. Yeah. We can see where we're at. We can see which departments are struggling a bit. We can see, okay, so sewing, we don't want to push anything heavy on sewing this week because they're backlogging. But mugs and bottle division, actually, they still got quite a bit of capacity for next week. So let's push marketing that way. And we can see it live. And that's the only way we can do it. But processing that sheer volume we kind of become, we're still a manufacturing hub, but now we're a big data house as well, which then brings in all new rules of managing thousands of customers' data and GDPR compliance and stuff. So it's quite technical to go from a normal printer to let's now be a personalization printer or let's deal mass market with B2C. Yes, thank you. 